What is up folks, it is Batube here, and today we are going to be looking at this Aimtom multi-purpose power station that does not work, it's got some issues with it. Unfortunately, this is not my first time recording this, uh, the last time all of the audio, for some reason, uh, because I record with a S21 Ultra with a USB microphone uh, with an external display plugged in as well as an external mouse. So for some reason the dock with all the external stuff was uh, partially unplugged or something and it just was not recording any audio. So that was scrapped. So I kind of casually put it back together just for cinematic effect. We can take it apart and get kind of a similar teardown experience. But uh, I will show you a couple of pictures, a bit of a whistle there on the way, uh, kind of describing or showing you guys one of the issues that I uh, encountered when I opened it up and that I seen. I did clean it up, so I'm going to have to show you the original photo uh, because we got most of the way through it. But... Uh, so, what we have is the aim tom, and uh, just a heads up, last video I was sick with COVID, and in this video I have a cold. So yeah, <laughs> you may, may be able to tell I'm a little bit stuffed up, but uh, anyways, this is the aim tom multi-purpose power station, it has a 100 watt inverter in it, MPPT solar charging, it has a 42,000 42, milliamp hour battery, which that is a bit of a lie in itself. Uh, it's 100% a lie, actually. Uh, solar chargeable, yeah, with the MPPT uh, solar charge controller that's inside of it, which I will show you guys. So basically, the issue is it won't turn on. Uh, nothing will turn on. But if you plug in the power source, which is a 15 volt 2 amp input, DC input, into the input on this side. It will actually start charging up. And if you can hear, there is a fan that is turned on. Now, this is going to do some weird stuff. It's going to skip. Um, it's going to charge about just a little, just a, a bit over a minute or something. And then it seems just to skip right to full bars. So let's wait and see if we can uh, get that to happen. Yeah, go figure, this time it's not going to jump up all the way. But yeah, there's um, uh, some issue with this. I'm pretty sure it has to do with the main... Oh, there it goes, right there. With the main control board, as you can see, we cannot turn on the... We can, just for a brief second. If you press it a bunch, it's hard to see. Let me... Uh, uh, so as you can see, you can kind of... In this weird way, you can kind of get it to sometimes come on, but it will not stay on. And not only that, you can hear some sort of uh, like buzzing uh, sound on the inside, which I believe is some sort of opto isolator, something like that, possibly a coil whining for some reason. I believe it's in relation to that flickering that I believe you guys can see. Uh, so some sort of a tick related to that. So yeah, that's not working. So as soon as you unplug it, completely dead. Nothing comes up. If you push it a bunch of times, as you can see, I can get the blue light to flash once, but not every time. You have to push a bunch of times in concession, in rapid succession rather. And same with that. If you push that, you can get both of them to trigger. Uh, this is another reason why I believe it's a microcontroller. Uh, just the things that it's doing, it's not very indicative of like a uh, capacitor or a bad resistor or something like that. It's definitely a possibility that can cause the uh, uh, some of the other ICs and uh, uh, controllers and microcontrollers to uh, act up and create some uh, weird behaviors. But that doesn't seem to be the case it, just in the variations of issues that there is. Uh, they don't seem to be necessarily related to one thing. It seems like it's multiple things going on, and it's all related to the microcontroller for this. So as you can see, the flashlight, usually you push that button to turn it on, but that's another button that if I flash it a bunch, I don't know if you guys can see, if I push the button a bunch, it will do some weird stuff and turn on. 
So it's like we're managing to trigger the microcontroller for just a second, but after that it's kicking out or doing some sort of protection or something like that. We're doing some weird stuff, so there's a component issue or a microcontroller issue, uh, which is the one that makes this pain in the ass to do, or basically impossible, especially when I couldn't find any of the schematic for this thing. So let's get it open so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So it's a two and a half millimeter hex head or Allen head, whatever you want to call it. Call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter to me. So the nut just fell out there, so that one's good. Now, we're kind of better off just to hold it on the side because on the opposite side, there are nuts. So the screw goes right through, or rather, I guess it would be a bolt. It goes right through to that nut on the other side. Like I said, I did have this apart before, so when I open it up, it's not going to look the cleanest in terms of uh, cable management stuff, so I will attest that that was me and not the company that made this. I just didn't see any point on putting any zip ties back in uh, just for the theatrical purposes of showing you guys how to open this thing up. So other screws in here, there are three very small Phillips head screws. They look like this. And they're in these three holes right here. And down in this one, you got a little bugger. A little, little bugger. You got one of those triangular McDonald's McDonald's toy style screwdrivers. They are the uh, Honestly, I, I was pretty sure that they had a specific name, but I guess the the full triangle head uh, Bit you know the bit that they use in Happy Meal toys and those disposable toys Well, they used a single screw right in this slot as their security screw now if you know how to bypass those screws all you need to do because obviously there's going to be three faces like a triangle. I uh, don't mind the roundness of the hands, obviously. So what you're going to do, you're going to take a flat head and you're going to match a single wall all the way. So when you twist, because the triangle is smaller in the other locations, when you twist, it cannot go anywhere. So it actually ends up turning the screw. I know that was kind of a horrible illustration, but uh, that's really the best I could do. So that's what I did. I took a small enough flat that I could get inside the head of the screw and I just untwisted it very nicely and it was just one so really even if you didn't couldn't do that you could just pop it open and probably break it very easily I don't know kinda of stupid so opening it up what you're first gonna see is the battery which also had a, f a piece of foam I had already checked the battery for issues it sucks um, that wasn't really a part of the footage that I want to show you guys, but there was nothing wrong with the battery. Um, uh, which I didn't think there was, but I like to rule out all possibilities. So how this works is you basically got the clamshell, and you got these slide-in, these slide-in modules that you can probably get out, but it's best to first take off the inverter box. This is your 120 volt inverter, uh, for the 100 watt inverter that they offer out of these outputs. And obviously here's your DC outputs, your USB outputs, and like I showed you before, on the opposite side, your DC input and the flashlight, the DC inputs 15 volts, 2 amps. So I'm using a Phillips number 2 to get these screws out. Uh, Phillips number 2 is the correct size. I only put two of them back in. There will normally be three. The third one right here. Make sure if you are dealing with one of these uh, solar generators, it doesn't have to be the specific model, one of the ones with the inverter, that you don't have the inverter switched on. And even still, if maybe if you're having issues, maybe the inverter is switched on. So it's always good to uh, maybe stick some probes into the AC outlets and make sure that there is a nut 
120 volts of AC running through it before you go touching anything on this board because there is 120 volts potentially somewhere on this board and 120 volts AC and it just feels really weird and nobody wants to get shocked so honestly the first the first thing which I want to show you guys before I unplug it that is a major flaw with this design is the fact that this battery is plugged directly into this you have you do have a fused input right here so that is good I mean if this shorts uh, it's it's well I mean if it shorts right here it's not going to do anything but assuming it shorts anywhere from the negative to anywhere else on this board it's going to be uh, shorting through this fuse and it will pop it but it's just the discharging is going uh, directly bypassing the BMS and the discharging is going directly to the inverter which isn't always a bad thing uh, but it's potentially bypassing switching protections from the BMS as the BMS cannot switch off power to this inverter uh, directly through these power lines it might be able to through these signal lines that you can see are going from this inverter board down to there uh, this would also handle switching the inverter on and off uh, when you when you turn press the button on the front of the panel so it could be communicating uh, to do some switching of the main lines through here but I doubt it uh, so that is one little flaw that could have been fixed having one of the discharge lines go through the BMS for switching uh, in case you need it so I'm gonna unplug the battery so uh, one thing I will mention is the reason they had the battery going right to the inverter is because the inverter is what is going to be using the most current out of this whole box so instead of using more wires they can use the ones that are al already on the battery uh, directly to the inverter to uh, create the least resistance and a good current flow I do want to mention that all of the wires coming off of the battery and carrying uh, carrying the pack level voltage from the uh, pack are silicone wire, 200, uh, 200 degrees Celsius rated wire, which is good, along with all these balance lines. So we're going to get further in here, and then I will show you what else is going on, because there's a bit more going on with these balance leads which is kind of weird now the DC output coming from the main board out to here uh, they kind of made stupid proof you have one the negative wire coming directly from here hardwired onto here to a spade connector that gets plugged into here now the positive terminal is the opposite it is soldered to the board and cannot be removed and the spade terminal is on the module. So that is stupid proof. You cannot put them backwards because it's literally only one way. Um, probably, probably for ease of assembly and just kind of stupid proofing stuff. Not really a bad thing right there. Not really a bad thing. One thing I will say, what you guys won't notice, because they did not get put back in, and this is one thing that is just a little bit of a gripe. Now, if you can see, these are the wires that they use for the AC output. You have 120 volts going through these lines. Yeah, it's only 100 watts, but they, I, I think they could have used a uh, thicker gauge than this. Alright, so to pull the battery out, there's just the balance lead leads right here. And I will explain what's going on there because they're not all balance leads. So I'm going to pull that out of the board and pull out the battery. Kind of show you what's going on here. Okay, so earlier how I said the battery goes directly to the inverter. That's true. Uh, but the main board still needs to get power. And not only does it need to get power, it needs to be able to charge the pack and discharge out the DC outputs and everything like that so it needs another main pack level output so as you can see there's a bunch of these lines here and this this is a 3S uh, device so there's no need for it to have all of these 
for just a 3s, right? So what's going on here is three of these positives and three of these negative leads are main power, main pack level voltage going right to the main board. And this is what's powering the DC output and uh, possibly charging at a pack level. Now, they went ahead and used multiple smaller gauge wires so they could use the same interface and make use of this interface and run it through without having to do a whole separate set of connectors for the main board uh, power. So they just multiplied a couple of the gauges to get the gauge that they needed for the uh, current rating that they were going for. So yeah, that's what's going on there. That's how the board gets its main power. And then the other wires are your balance lines. Okay, so I put the battery aside. We're gonna unplug this module, this one over here. When I'm plugging the separate wires, you don't really need to keep note where they plug in. It might be a good idea if you unplug other similar ones. But the reason being is because they can only plug into certain ones as the longer ones plug into a different location. That module's out, just like that. And that was kind of another stupid proofing thing that they did. Even though there's so much slack on this that they didn't need, They that was probably just the stock length of the cable of this fan. They didn't bother shortening it. Whatever. I uh, guess it's cheaper assembly. But the way they did that, if they did it in that way, um, it makes it so you don't really have to label it. It is labeled in Chinese, so that's probably what they were reading. But I can't really read that. So um, all I did was the lengths correspond to where they go. Obviously, in this case where you have multiple of the same or similar ones unplugged, as you can see, it uh, might be a good idea to keep note of that. So the LED, that one was fairly easy. That's for the switch and flashlight. Okay, so to get the main board out, once again, Phillips number two. And I just put it in a single screw, but there's four, one in each corner to get the main board out. Main board's out. Let me get to a zoom lens and we'll check it out. All right, folks, here we are at the board level. Now we can get a look at the components on the board. So the last time I opened this up uh, on camera, what we seen was, let me orient this correctly, we seen some corrosion, uh, which looked like uh, something let the smoke out right around this capacitor right on the bottom. If you notice, it's kind of more tilted than the rest of them. And uh, it looks just a slight bit different than the rest of them. So uh, that is what I noticed with that one. All right, so if we get real down here, really close down here, you can see this is the capacitor that had the area around it. I'll show a picture right now. So that was the capacitor that I thought, okay, this is gonna be an easy fix, probably gonna be a shorter capacitor. And that is the capacitor that we went and checked. So if I just turn on my meter, I'll put it in continuity so you guys can hear it. You don't need to see the meter itself. And we'll come over and probe this. And there's nothing. It's not shorted whatsoever. And if you go along the row, you'll see that that is normal. None of them are shorted. And you know, I went around after that went around to all of them and checked for shorts didn't find anything uh, obviously you cannot accurately measure a capacitor when it's on the board like this as if you try and measure capacitance you're also going to be measuring the capacitance of the traces and anything else that's in the circuit with the capacitor as you are measuring both polarities through the capacitor whereas the resistor you're measuring a single uh, polarity, uh, single flow, direction, I don't really know the word that I'm looking for, I guess would be polarity, it's, it's on the same polarity, so you can probe both sides and get a proper resistance measurement of a resistor, but you cannot get a proper capacitance measurement of a capacitor on a board, you actually have to remove it, but we can check for shorts, stuff like that, and there was no shorts whatsoever across all of these as well, you can do some, uh, inaccurate resistance measurements and if 
you can see like if it's a uh, ohms like in the ohms range it's probably a short uh, it may not it may not beep like that like the continuity but it's going to read very 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 low resistance uh, maybe a couple ohms or something or maybe even a bit more than that just enough to not cause it to beep but uh, still cause a short so I went and looked for that couldn't find anything I went around this whole board had a look at all the components which I'll kinda go over them with you uh, to kind of explain what's going on here so as you can see we have way over here we have an opto isolator now I'm pretty sure that opto isolator is for the logic level voltage uh, separating the logic level 5 uh, five volts from the higher pack level voltage the 3s pack level I'm just uh, not quite sure why it's all the way over to the right uh, you can follow the traces and see that it uses this at ground while well, this is ground plane right here I'm assuming it's going to all of these and it does lead over here which if you can see right here we have the DC to DC buck converter uh, with some isolation right there and that is going to be converting from the 15 volts or the 3s uh, pack level down to the 5 volt logic level uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that's what the opto isolator is for isolating the logic level from the higher voltage level uh, as well as you can see we got a short key diode got a couple of them on the opposite side as well doing some diode things and some forwarding uh, you know we got our switches for this one's for the AC inverter this one's for the uh, indicators you also have right here I'm assuming this is uh, for some programming uh, things of that nature uh, you have right here you have your MPPT controller chip that is you have your CN CN3722 chip right there that is your MPPT solar charge controller chip uh, handled by that chip right there over here you have your BMAS chip this is a this is a BM3451 uh, BMS controller chip right there so that is handling all the BMS nature for the battery pack and if we have it on the flip as you, as you can see uh, before we flip it over quick you can obviously see all the components uh, related to these controllers uh, such as the resistors and the capacitors for filtering and things of that nature so those are just basically all related to the controllers and uh, the nature and the stuff that they do so if we have a flip C you see we got some coils uh, we have a couple MOSFETs right here we got three over here which I'm assuming is for the 3S pack maybe the balancing we have two over here which uh, based on where it is may, may have to do with the 15 volt input switching the 15 volt input uh, maybe for the MPPT uh, charge controller but there's a couple MOSFETs for switching and a couple MOSFETs over here which I'm pretty sure are specifically for the BMS these three uh, you have some diodes, triode um, other components that are related to all of this obviously Alright, so we got this beefy resistor right here, that's an R006, it's a four digit, but you got the R in front, so that'll be a decimal place of 0 0.006 ohms, so that is a very low resistance, not exactly sure what that's for, something, something to do with the balancing, not 100% uh, that great with these components, I'm learning with you guys, a couple more of those shock key diodes right there. You can kind of follow the traces and get an idea of where they go. I didn't spend too much time to uh, fully reverse engineer this board, and I couldn't find the schematic online for this board. So um, you can look, take what you want from it, read what you want from it. I will give you a bit of a shine so you can follow those traces and vias nicely. It just takes a bit of time. But yeah, this board is not too bad. It's kind of like a little proprietary thing. I couldn't find this board specifically. I was wondering if maybe they uh, kind of mass produce these and put them in like a bunch of other generic quote unquote uh, solar generators. Uh, similar ones to this one. Like I said earlier, when we first opened this up, you could see the 42,000 milliamp hour rating. Now, that is not at the pack level voltage. Uh, the battery pack that it came, to, came with is 14 amp hours, which is way far off from their other rating. So I believe they are using 
uh, the rating based on the 3.7 level, which if you did 14 by 3, you're still not getting quite that, but you're going to be getting... Yeah, actually, you're going to be getting the 42 amp hour. <laughs> so yeah, you're, they're using the single S voltage rating. So there's three S. <laughs> oh my god. And each parallel group is 14 amp hour. But considering they're in series, you're only getting 14 amp hours in total. <laughs> Cheeky little buggers. Okay. So yeah, that's what that's what's going on on this board. There's one chip I left off, and that's because this is the main chip that we're having the issue with, and this is the chip that I couldn't find anything to do with. If I can kind of shine it and uh, get you guys in on it, we have the JXY. You can see there, it's very kind of hard to get it in the correct light, but it's the F zero two zero LV. Uh, low voltage maybe, not sure, but once again, JXY F020LV, and the bottom number, which I believe just is the individualized serial number, uh, so that will not bring you up any results, I do not think. You can find a couple of results on AliExpress, but I could not come up with the diagram or the schematic for this chip. Uh, but this is what's controlling, like the solar generator part, that's what's kind of uh, creating the communication between the MPP teach uh, solar charge controller, the BMS, and the components in this, such as the inverter. So this will be dealing with uh, whether or not the inverter is overheating, I guess, little, little things like that. Probably the weird problems that we're having, uh, kind of unexplainable, very specific patternized problems which I could only point to this chip uh, for that, for those issues. So this is kind of what I'm putting it on. Maybe it has something to do with those capacitors, and maybe those capacitors blew it up. As you can see, uh, there's actually one more right here. That's kind of a little interesting, but there was nothing wrong with any of these either. But we'll have a quick peek again. So, oh, no shorts whatsoever across these. So yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with anything. They're just slightly discolored, uh, maybe from getting heated up. So maybe they do have something to do with it. Uh, but you know what? I'm not even going to go bother to go any further into it than this. Uh, because I personally don't really like this board and the way they bypass things with the inverter. So I think what I'm going to be doing is getting a little proprietary MPPT board, a little BMS, and we will deal with the switching for the inverter and uh, even possibly a little uh, battery indicator that we will put inside the box that this currently was in to replace this whole board and to do it in a much better way. Uh, so that is the plan with the solar charge controller or the solar power generator So that is why I didn't really want to uh, delve much deeper into this But you definitely could if you wanted to uh, reverse the traces now it could definitely uh, lead to One of these basic components maybe a resistor or a capacitor That's uh, maybe causing some weird inputs or something into one of these microcontrollers Which is causing the main microcontroller on the opposite side to do some wacky stuff but I just don't have the time, or the patience, or the care to uh, go ahead and do that. As you can see, just a weird <laughs> zero, zero resistance. I uh, swear that was random, but yeah. <laughs> so while we're here, I figured we'd uh, just have a quick look at the inverter and uh, how this was. I think this is an off-the-shelf component based on the sticker. Uh, that's kind of indicative that uh, this is a, like a shut-up meter, like a multi like a multi-model component, uh, one that they somewhat mass produce uh, in these different common ranges like uh, 110, 220, and then the kind of odder ones, the 230 and the 105, I was more expecting like 120, but uh, the 105 is what you get. Uh, the 110 is more what you get from a uh, center tapped 
Transformer, like uh, commonly in the States and Canada, as well as 220. Uh, whereas the 230 and the 105, I believe, is more commonly uh, from a 600 volt transformer, three phase transformer. I I forget how that works. Uh, someone someone might know exactly what I'm talking about. The weird 105 volt and the 110 volt. Yeah, the weird difference. But yeah, that's why they make this um, specific model in these different scenarios so i'm assuming this isn't specific to this solar generator this is probably a somewhat off the shelf component that they uh made use that they made work inside of this box it does look like they kind of did these cutouts on their own you can actually see maybe if i put in the right light see these corners are not sharp you can actually see a circle where they've actually drilled before they cut <laughs> So they drilled right there as well as right there to get something the wire in there or whatever to cut through the board so that does look like an afterthought uh, and possibly something that they did and as you can see these holes here what these are actually for is to snap this off so it looks like they left it uh, so yeah looks like an off-the-shelf component well somewhat off the shelf you're not going to go into a your average har hardware store and buy this obviously I just mean like a, a consumer PCB component so yeah it's a basic uh, MOSFET based inverter modified sign it's not going to be that pretty stuff for the good electronics and uh, the noise making things <laughs> such as fluorescent lights are going to be very noisy and the inductive loads are not going to like this but it's only rated for 100 watts. You're, it's probably going to be used just to charge a laptop or something like that. So it's it's definitely appropriate for that scenario. A little little temperature probe, prevent overheating. That's actually it's a diode. That's a diode that might be for high temperature and low temperature. Hmm. Um. And wow, this goes into the ground plane, but it's rusty as all hell. Not sure why that one got rusty. Well, this this can't get rusty as it's aluminum, but yeah, I guess that one's a little rusty too. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, basic. There's your battery terminals right from the battery right into the inverter with a 30 amp fuse uh, to protect from shorts and stuff like that. A little opto isolator for the logic level. Once again, very common stuff. Couple Dewey, 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 Dewey caps. <laughs> oh my God! Couple Dewey caps and some random, random ass black one in there. Funky, funky. Quick look at the modules. As you can see, just some basic multi-regional power things which I kind of despise just because of how open it is even when you have any of them plugged in these are kind of weird but it works because you can plug in any type of plug uh, but it's also dangerous well not quite dangerous but uh, it's open for fuck ups because of this uh, you can just go plug in any appliance and in some cases it can destroy the appliance that you plug in if it's the wrong voltage uh, being applied to the device so yeah, that's one of those basic plugs that they use for the inverter outputs, 110 volts. So I really don't know why they didn't just use the common US and Canada one, but uh, I guess for the weird use case scenarios, uh, here is your couple of possibly sense lines or something, because here's your main 12 volt negative uh, going to the board, and you have a spade right here for the 12 volt uh, positive coming from the board and that is for your DC outputs okay so that makes sense this is uh, this one right here would be for your USB power outputs then the opposite module very simple and just your flashlight your DC input uh, just just on a bit of a PCB to support the jack as well as the fan which is just a basic fan they didn't even bother cutting down the wires they used all the slack and just wrapped it up nice and cheap all right guys 
so for now, that's kind of it on his aim tom. Um, I was unable to determine the problem with this board. Um, I'm assuming the problem is the controller, but I can't say 100% for sure. Uh, but I kind of gave up because I have other better plans for this, which is going to make it more practical for my use cases. So we are going to put our own MPPT solar, solar charge controller inside of it, just a little uh, just a little module off the shelf jobby that'll be even better than the one that's already in it um, It's gonna have the same battery that came in it because there's nothing wrong with it I checked the battery. It's at a perfect 3.7 volts nominally, so It's perfect uh, in the 100 watt inverter. We can use the same one like we used before or if I do a bit of a search up maybe I can find a bit of a more powerful inverter model in this identical form factor I don't know. We'll see. But that's for another video. We're going to beef this up, kind of make it DIY, kind of make it uh, a bit better for a bit more of a power hungry user. It's going to be easy to integrate things like the, uh, the flashlight, the DC input. That's all going to be very easy to integrate with the new stuff. That's not what I'm worried about. Uh, we can even put a quick charge USB outputs if we have enough pins on this module which we might, and we could do quick charge 3.0 out of these, and if not, we can maybe remove this board and put something else, so we can do quick charge. Just some, just some little upgrades make this box a lot better. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. It sucks that we weren't be able to fix the main board, but we are going to be able to make this into a much better solar generator than it ever was. Uh, for pretty cheap too. Okay guys, so stay tuned for that video. Thanks again for watching and have a great day